Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today, we from Group 3 would like to present about the aircraft radio communication and the difference between the communication in Boeing aircraft and light aircraft. The first ever item of radio equipment to appear on aircraft were low frequency communication set in the World War I days of spark gap transmitters. By the 1930s, the early kit continuous wave CW radio telegraphy was beginning to be replaced by radio telephone. Early radio telephone was within the low frequency and high frequency bands, the set operating on only one or few frequencies. With air filled, widely spaced, and low power transmission, there was a little interference and so the need for many channels did not arise. The situation has drastically changed since World War II. Air traffic and facilities have increased with the consequent demand for extra channel which cannot be provided in the low frequency, middle frequency, or high frequency bands. Fortunately, very high frequency equipment has been successfully developed from early beginnings in the World War II fighter control. And finally, reaching today, in which the current situation is the very high frequency is used for short range communication, whereas the high frequency is used for long range communication. In addition, in such aircraft, there are also other ways for radio communication, such as C call, selective calling, SATCOM, satellite communication, and AIS, audio integrated system. But we will only focus on the VHF and HF communication by the aircraft. Flight 209, you are cleared for takeoff. Roger. Huh? LA departure frequency 123.9er. Roger. Huh? Request vector. Over. What? Flight 209 are clear for vector 324. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Now our radio clearance. Over. That's Clarence. Over. Over. Roger. Huh? Roger. Over. What? Huh? Who? Basic principles of an aircraft VHF constant receiver is comprised of either a single or double conversion superhead receiver and an AM transmitter. A modern set provides 720 channels at 25 kHz, spacing between 118 MHz and 135.975 MHz until recently the spacing was 50 kHz giving only 360 channels. The mode of operation is single channel simplex which is one frequency and one antenna for both receiver and transmitter. Communication by VHF is line of sight by direct space wave which means a short range communication. Aircraft VHF communication system consists of VHF transceiver, control head, antenna and an interface to the aircraft audio system for access to the microphone and cockpit speaker. A single VHF installation consists of three parts namely control unit, transceiver, and antenna. VHF communication transmitters provide AM voice communication transmission between aircraft and ground stations or between aircraft and another aircraft. This is the VHF block diagram of an aircraft. The receiver portion of a VHF communication system is typically the superheterodyne type. The antenna receives an induced signal from the electromagnetic fields passing the antenna. This signal is sent through a bandpass filter to an RF amplifier. Once amplified, the signal passes through a low pass filter and into the first stage mixer. The mixer converts the RF into an intermediate frequency, IF. The IF is a lower frequency and is easier to control through the receiver. 
the IF is amplified to produce a stronger signal which is sent to the second stage mixer where again a lower frequency is produced. This signal is amplified and sent to the detector where the audio wave is separated from the carrier wave. The audio signal is then amplified by the buffer and broadcast into the aircraft by the speaker. The transmitter receives an input signal from the microphone or data inputs. This signal is amplified by the audio buffer and sent to the modulator in bracket synthesizer. The modulator produces an AM signal which is filtered, amplified and sent to an ALC automatic level control circuit. Similar to the AGC in the receiver, the ALC ensures that a consistent output signal is sent to the antenna even at varying input signal strengths. Like aircraft, VHFS usually have a panel mounted combined transceiver and control unit while Boeing aircraft carries a triple VHF comms. Would either of you like another cup of coffee? I will, but Jim won't. I think I will have another cup of coffee. Jim never has a second cup of coffee at home. The use of HF carriers for communication purpose greatly extends the range at which aircrew can establish contact with aeronautical mobile service station. This being so, we find that HF communication systems are fitted to aircraft flying routes which are for some part of the flight out of range of very high frequency services. The long range is achieved by the use of sky waves which are refracted by the ionosphere to such an extent that they are bent sufficiently to return to Earth. The high frequency ground wave suffers quite rapid attenuation with distance from the transmitter. Ionospheres attenuation also takes place being greatest at the lower HF frequencies. A significant feature of long range HF transmissions is that it is subject to selective fading over narrow bandwidth tens of cycles which operates at high frequencies between 2 until 29.99 MHz. This is the block diagram of HF system in aircraft. The RF signal is received by the antenna, coupled through the coupler and the de-energized transmit receive relay in the RF amplifier and finally to the receiver transmitter receiver RF input RF audio conversion is accomplished in the receiver section using input from the frequency synthesizer the recovered audio component is amplified to a power level sufficient to be used as an audio input to the peripheral equipment During the transmit function, voice or data signals from the peripheral equipment are switched through the COM switching metric to the USB and LSB transmit audio inputs to the receiver transmitter. A keying signal is also applied from the peripheral equipment. For emergency or maintenance operations, voice and keying signals can originate at the mic or headset assembly connected directly to the receiver transmitter. Audio to RF conversion is accomplished when the carrier frequency is modulated by the audio input. The modulated RF is amplified by the RF amplifier to the selected power level of 400 or 1000 watts, depending on the mode selected on the control box. 
and then coupled to the antenna for transmission. A typically large aircraft such as Boeing consists of two systems. Light aircraft HF system have a fixed antenna coupler such a system operate on a restricted number of channels. Oh, I should have had that second cup of coffee. In aircraft, VHF communication radios, a DC signal from a microphone is amplified and then superimposed over the AC carrier wave signal. As the varying DC information signal is amplified, the amplifier output current varies proportionally. The oscillator that creates the carrier wave does so with this varying current. The oscillator frequency output is consistent because it is built into the oscillator circuit. But the amplitude of the oscillator output varies in relation to the fluctuating current input. A DC audio signal modifies the 121.5 MHz carrier wave as shown in C. The amplitude of the carrier wave A is changed in relation to modifier B. This is known as amplitude modulation AM. When the modulated carrier wave strikes the receiving antenna, voltage is generated is the same as that which was applied to the transmitter antenna. However, the signal is weaker. It is amplified so that it can be demodulated. Demodulation is the process of removing the original information signal from the carrier wave. Electronic circuits containing capacitor, inductor, diode, filter, and etc. removes all but the desired information signal identical to the original input signal. Then the information signal is typically amplified again to drive speakers or other output devices. Demodulation of a received audio signal involves separating the carrier wave from the information signal. Atmospheric noises or static alter the amplitude of a carry wave, making it difficult to separate the intended amplitude modulation caused by the information signal and that which is caused by static. In short, aircraft uses VHF for short range and HF for long range communication. As Boeing, it carries three VHF and dual HF and a light aircraft only carries dual VHF communication and a single HF antenna coupler. That's all for us. Thank you for listening and have a good day. Excuse me, I happen to be passing. I thought you might like some coffee. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thank you. My voice is down. Thank you. Cream? No, thank you. I take it black. Like my man. <laughs>